John Candy and Canadian Bacon. This is a Michael Moore movie. That's right. That Michael Moore, the guy who made all those documentaries. This is a movie made that slips in somewhere in the mid-90s. says here it's 95, so I'm just going to roll with assuming that's the case. It's a solid release. I watched the movie in full. Transfer looks okay. This is not like a beautiful movie. Although, it has a charm to its own. It's a 90s comedy. John Candy is awesome, obviously. This is not one of his best movies, but it's not one of his worst ones at all. This movie has just been gone. Not talked about, not on TV, not on syndication. Obviously, that heavily has to do with the subject matter of the plot, which, just to go over quickly, the loose premise is there is a lame duck U.S. president who needs to spice up his presidency, I guess, and his uh, military advisor, who has corporate ties to a weapons manufacturer, is you know trying to start a proxy war with Canada just to spice things up and... Um, Anyway, there's a there's a subplot there with the uh, with the weapons manufacturer. The point is, um, John Candy is this local sheriff living around the border. They get riled up in the from the news. A anyway, it's just there's a lot of topical telling things going on in this movie, and it's funny. It's also loaded with conspiracy theory references, which makes sense coming from Michael Moore. Now the ones that are in here are, are real things. They're not, they're not crazy conspiracy theory stuff. It's all stuff that's fact that's come out. It's peppered in the plot. There's things people are saying because, you know, it's the president and his advisors, his military advisors. So they're cracking jokes and references to all sorts of weird things that have happened over the years. So anyway, this movie's just been forgotten by time. It's worth checking out if you've never heard of it or seen it before. If you know you like John Candy, it's going to be worth your time. There's a lot of cameos and other great comedic actors in here, too. I won't even spoil it. Just seek it out. The release was fairly affordable for me. It was even cheaper when it came out. I should have just pulled the trigger back then. But whatever, saw it in a store when I was in there on foot. It was the only thing that looked cool, so I snagged it up. The other thing we got was this bad boy. Now, I felt compelled to pick this up since the Army of Darkness, the Carry, um, the They Live Steelbook, they've all been like really sweet. So, we're at the beginning of this with these new 4K re releases of the Steelbook. So, I figured let's get The Fog. It's not my favorite John Carpenter movie. I have the old version. Sorry, I hit the camera a bit there. I have the previous release, the Steelbook version. Of these Carpenter Steelbooks, this might be one of my favorite ones, especially just the colors on the front here. This is really, really good stuff. The new one is okay. It's better in person. When this was being released originally, I was not in love with this. I figured if I was going to pick this up, I'd probably get the standard edition, but I just held off. Glad I did, because I think I am going to basically just go with the Steelbooks on these guys going forward, because they're pretty cool. Love the love the title font here. Spine. Now, this one does add some stuff. I think you've got the old mono mix. You've got an Atmos mix. And you've got the 4K stuff going on, right? Big difference here, and what I'm basically going to focus on here is this is a Studio Canal Master. So... It's similar to what you got, I think, previously released before Screen Factory did the 4K version again. There might be some encoding and bitrate differences. I think I heard the Screen Factory version is superior, which is typically the case between them. But you'll notice, and it says it right here, that the restoration, 4K restoration by Studio Canal, okay? Now, I unfortunately do not have the J card for this one. This is my old version, just the Blu-ray. Really sweet art on here. These are, and I'm going to make a video. It's going to be another video that I'm going to push, 
post shortly after this one. I'm going to go through all my John Carpenter releases that I have, okay? These are the reason I sort of, or part of what got me back into collecting was the Scream Factory steelbooks of these John Carpenter movies. So this is a goodie. This transfer, and you can reference the standard version that was released. The back of that states that the restoration slash color timing is Dean Cundy approved. Not the case with the new version. Studio Canal went, did that one, right? So the major difference is the Studio Canal version is much darker. Now, that's something like we hear a lot lately with a lot of the 4Ks. And I've seen it too. And it's going to be the discussion that we're about to have about this and another release as well. This definitely looks darker and it's done stylistically, I think. Um, particularly you can tell in the day shots. Now, in the case of this particular movie, I see the intent. It makes the movie gloomier. You know, there's just, the movie is just hazier, gloomier. Uh, it tones down the day shots. Um, it looks good. It's just darker, noticeably, when you pop the Blu-ray previous version. I didn't even watch the new Blu-ray in here. I only focused on the, the old release since it had the different color timing. This has the new remaster on it. Night and day difference. It's just like the day shots, just much, much brighter, much brighter. Um, this looks good. And I will say like there's some of the creatures and stuff, you'll see less of them. There's just less detail. You see more of that in the Blu-ray that pops more, especially when you have a main creature and then some in the background in a few shots. Um, I won't say it's bad though, but it's a little dark and I think it's done stylistically and I think it's done mostly well. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a Dolby Vision setup, so I'm going off of the regular HDR transfer that's on here. There's a good chance that, and especially the Dolby Vision, I think is new for this release, it's probably going to look better. I can't reference that. So seek out another review just to find out more if that's a concern. But I suspect that for sure the Dolby version on this is probably a little bit better. So I definitely plan to keep both anyway. I have a lot of the other steelbooks which we'll see in that other video. But uh, you get a little bit of a different flavor with both. But the 4K was definitely cool. But... What it reminds me of is this release. I just got this, so I held off on buying this sucker because of, again, what we're discussing now, the dark factor. When this came out a few months ago, it was riddled with conspiracy. People were just saying the transfer looked dark. I let the dust settle on that. I figured I'd pick it up on sale. That happened. It went on sale on Amazon. I figured possibly if I ordered now, I'd get it with a slip. La di da. That's exactly what happened. I received it in okay condition. Here we go. Feel free to use that. I already have this movie on digital. So, you know, standard Blu ray underneath. So, and uh, I think these are stacked. This came stupid too. They had the bonus disc underneath the 4K, which is insane. Please, if you're gonna do that, stack the Blu-rays, leave the 4K on its own pedestal. I, I don't get that mentality. So anyway, we finally got this sucker. I watched it. Oh my God. Everything I just said about the fog, it's the same in this, but it's done horrible. I, I've never been more confused about something in my life. This is not good. I don't want to say it's bad, but I don't think it makes sense. I'm not a photography expert, but I know a little bit about it. This movie is basically like they put a neutral density filter over the whole movie. Um, in particular, the day scenes. So it works in the night stuff because it, it looks fine. It just looks like they've kind of darkened and chilled out the movie a little bit but in the day scenes 
it doesn't even make sense. You're losing so much detail because of this filter they've applied. Uh, you look at the sky and it's gray. It, it literally looks like a, in the eyeglass world, a grade two, a 2.5 tint. It, it's insane. It doesn't make any sense. It, you know, it really stood out to me in a scene where you see one of the detectives, I think, and they're standing next to a yellow car outside. I forget exactly what scene it is, but the car looks lifeless. There's no color to it. You don't see it. It just, the, it looks depressing. It looks really depressing. It looks bad. And oh my God, I put the Blu-ray in after just to compare it. Just like the fog, you see it right away. It pops in the day scenes. It pops. And I, I'm not comparing even an old version of the movie. I'm comparing the uh, director definitive edition, which is the previous version of the movie that came out just before this new 4K. Basically the same master. It's a 4K master on this. But this has the completely different color timing, which tells me that that's not what's happening here. Something weird happened or some choice was made. I don't understand the rationale. I am on the fence on whether or not I should return this or not. I almost want to keep it because I don't think they're going to release Heat again on a physical format that has a different transfer. I don't think. Uh, I could be wrong, but it's Disney product now, so good luck with that. Uh, if they do remaster it, they'll keep it for themselves, right? So... Um, it's a miracle we kind of got this at all, uh, but it sucks, and everything that's on here is available here, and I think re-watching it, even with the better resolution, like this might look good with a much, much more expensive television than I own currently in ideal settings. You'd have to watch it in the dark. Otherwise, I feel like I'd just throw this on see a bit more of the movie movie looks fine here i wish i had my old version i used to have the old old blu-ray which i think probably had a different color temperature than even this does point is the difference between two these two is insane everything you heard about this being too dark is definitely too true to be ignored anyway that's my piece on that Enjoy the code again. I'm sure it didn't get missed, but I'll just pop it up again. So, I just want to mention, talking about these transfers, you know, I can't undersell enough, especially in the case of heat, how seeing the difference between those two transfers just makes you feel emotionally. And then you put a movie like this, you know, even in the case of the other one with the fog where the argument can be made where I'm not watching the movie with Dolby Vision on a beautiful state-of-the-art television. I put this on just the other night. Felt like watching the movie. I was in the mood for it. I'd skimmed through this transfer when I got this release like a year ago at this point or a few months back. I can't remember exactly when this came out. It came out last year. I almost made this one of my top fives. I probably should have just put this on my top five list because, oh my God, transfer is sick. And again, I'm not watching the Dolby Ver Vision version of this. You put this on, there's no part of me saying, oh, this looks like it's too dark or it's tinted weird. No, it looked beautiful. This is like what you want your 4Ks to look like. The movie just came to life and it looked like it was beautifully restored and taken care of. Oh my God. So anyway, just like a little bit of a shout out to this Wild Things release from Arrow. Arrow hasn't had much lately, but my God, at least when they put out something like this, they, you get something like special. So anyway, hopefully the dark transfer thing is not something we'll see too much of, but I suspect that it's tied to lazier restorations where they're trying to hide some of the imperfections in the work and you know unfortunately i mean it wasn't the case in this case here but you know arrow and scream factory they're getting a little lazy in my opinion so these are corners that i hope to not see cut further but 
Anyway, we should just be aware of it. Uh, another good transfer, and a, a little mini rant that this is going to skyrocket into. So, again, I've been talking about this little garbage Walmart that I go through, okay? So, they had a $5 4K, which blows my mind. I've never seen anything ever priced that low for a 4K. And not only was it $5, it was sealed, obviously, it's brand new, had a slip cover. But it's going to kind of spitball a side conversation. So here's the movie. The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. It's a uh, John Wayne movie. Okay. This is not a movie I would normally buy. I literally only bought it because it was that cheap. And I, I, I had to double take it. I saw it sitting on the shelf, and it was next to a $5 sticker. And I, I, I had to go in close just to see. Sure enough said 4K UHD right on the $5 sticker. So they had two of them at the time where I purchased this. Bought one. Um, the other one was gone the next time I went in there too. So it was gone for a while. Three, four weeks go by. I was in the same Walmart. They've got like six of these there now. Same thing, five bucks. So if you're in Canada and you're in the mood for this movie, or you just want to say you bought a $5 4K, which again, five dollars for Americans translates to three fifty. It's preposterous. It's like dollar store prices. So, if you want to just say you got a movie for five bucks on four K with a Blu Ray and a digital code, head on down to Walmart. Um, they had it next to a bunch of Western stuff. So, um, but this spitballs a. So we got a slipcover. Same art underneath. This is a Paramount picture. So, again, feel free to steal that code. Take it out and just put it in the, the camera for a second. Just basic Blu-ray with it. So, in the U.S., this got released as a Paramount Presents title. Okay? You know fancy like case that opens up it has a poster and everything i think this was their first 4k on that line too so the paramount presents line has been muddled with controversy ever since it started because um they'd release movies and then release them on 4k people wanted them to be 4k from the beginning now they've started doing that but sometimes the 4ks are not on the paramount presents line they just put them on a regular line or a steelbook so they're all over the place, and here's why. It's because it's a made-up line. They're literally just trying to scam collectors in the U.S. Because guess what? Paramount Presents doesn't exist here. This is the Man Who Shot Liberty Valance Canadian 4K. So obviously it's got the French, right? doesn't say Paramount Presents anywhere on it. I actually haven't looked at this. Let's just do it for fun. Yeah, no, it doesn't. So... No Paramount Presents here, okay? So that's fine. Problem is, I've bought and I've gotten Paramount Presents titles before here. So, Golden Child, Trading Places, okay? And you know they're the Paramount Presents version because here's the disc. I didn't buy these, like, after the fact. I bought these when these came out, brand new. They didn't release these with these the awesome slipcovers here. They just released these as normal titles. Um, these weren't cheap when they came out, but they weren't super expensive. I feel like I remember being a little pissed that they didn't come with the slips because the slips were pretty cool, admittedly. I feel like these might have been priced like they should have come with the nice collector slip. But uh, anyway, it's been too many years since these came out. But anyway, it's just... It's just confusing, and I feel like this muddies the waters even a little bit. To anyone who was confused about what the hell Paramount Presents is supposed to be to begin with, understand, I don't know what it's like in Europe or even other places where Paramount releases this stuff, but Paramount Presents is a lie? Anyway, I'm still pissed I don't have a Golden Child slip, though. I hope this gets re-released pretty soon on a steelbook. Last item to discuss today is going to be, again, 
a weird Walmart find. This one mind blowing because I'd thought of this release. So I like I like to collect television stuff, especially nostalgia. Some animated, some non animated live action, just stuff I used to watch when I was younger. Some of it's bad, and you just ride the nostalgia wave. Some of it is really good, and some of it is both. And this is the latter. And it's the X-Men. This is the X-Men animated show. This is a 2009 DVD release. Okay? Five volumes. To my knowledge, they're only available this format. I don't think they ever came with a box. They did come with slip covers, though, which looked awesome. It was basically the same art, but uh, embossed and cool. Some of the older videos on YouTube have uh, examples of those. I don't know. You probably get them on eBay or something for, for expensive. These were cheap. They had these for Canadian 10 bucks each. Weirdly enough, they did not have volume 2. Really weird. Really frustrating, too, because I'm sure these just got put out fresh, too. So they had one, three, four, five. So I remember looking at that. They were all 10 bucks each. I Googled it, assured myself that there was only a second one missing. They had one on Amazon for a little bit more than these were. But, you know, overall, these were selling for 120 bucks for a set of them on eBay. Um, this was a released in 2009. Now, the, not the show, just these DVDs. I think that was pretty early when Disney bought Marvel. Um, I don't think they're going to re-release this stuff, guys. So if you like this show at all, consider picking these up. I don't know that you'll be able to find them at a Walmart like I did, but give it a shot. Um, I will say, from what I've heard, is the first two seasons, everything's good. Seasons three, four, five, though... Some of the episodes get mixed up because these are basically the episodes listed in air date and the actual production dates differ. I've seen this happen with other sets. I've seen a few different lists with slightly different variations to the episode lists. To me, that doesn't matter so much because 90% of the time when I'm watching something like this, it's just on and my wife and I are just having coffee in, in the morning, you know, shooting just chatting and stuff, and this is just playing in the background. So that's fine. I feel like I'll make a master list just so I can reference an actual chronology one day because this show is actually good enough to watch and, and enjoy. So I'll just show it off real quick. We got the first one. Inside is just two basic DVDs, okay? Nothing fancy. They don't even have art. They're not the worst thing I've ever seen, but nothing incredible. So, used to watch this all the time when I was younger. It was on TV, syndicated like hell. It's awesome. Like, quite frankly, to me, this is the X-Men. When the movies came out, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, this is what we were comparing it to. And guess what? This is better. You know... They've managed to make a few good X-Men movies over the years, and Logan was pretty good. But quite frankly, everything that's happening in this show, much more awesome. Super faithful to the comics. Takes a lot of the huge story arcs. and you know, If you watch, if you read some of these like episode lists, there's like four or five part episode. Long day. Sorry. Basically, this is the X-Men equivalent to Batman, the animated series. It's, it's as good. It's got a different vibe than that show. But as far as something being faithfully adapted from its source, amazing. It's never going to get re-released. I'm positive. We're in this little sweet zone before, you know... Marvel slash Disney has re-released or rebooted the X-Men yet. They're about to, 100%. And they're bringing Hugh Jackman back for Deadpool. Who knows what they're going to do. But what they're not going to do is they're not going to re-release a Blu-ray of this old show. There's no way they want that sucker to be on Disney Plus 100%. So if you have any interest in picking these guys up, 
do it. Do it now before it's too late. It's exactly the like the stuff I want to own. My childhood favorite stuff that people are trying to like hide behind paywalls that constantly shift. Now in, the, in this case, Disney, they're not going to shift. It's going to be behind that particular paywall forever. But you know how much Disney Plus is going to cost in like ten years? Like I'm subscribed now just because, but I'm not going to be forever. Disney Plus in a few years is literally going to cost like thirty, forty, fifty dollars. Just with the way inflation's going up, it's just going to be an insane number that doesn't make any sense. So, guess what? DVDs safely packaged in an awesome collection that's housed 